All right, hi everyone. Welcome to today's uh, video. So, yeah, this is going to be the first of one of two series that we're going to be coming back to uh, this year in 2024. Uh, the main one that we were definitely going to eventually come back to this year was is uh, the presidential election series. Which we will not touch that until December. So we got a long while before that. And, uh, well, earlier this year, the House decided to, uh, once again make a, uh, uh, an impeachment happen for the 22nd time in American history. So here we are. So today, we're going to be talking about the congressional, well, not really congressional, but um, we're going to be talking about the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas. So we're going to briefly talk about who he is as a person, like where he is in terms of like government. Uh, he has been alive since 1959. So, yeah, obviously he's still alive. Uh, his current office is, well, he is the second cabinet secretary to ever be impeached since William Belknap, who was, you know, the secretary of war, all the way back in 1876. So, he is our current secretary of Homeland Security, and he's been in office since uh, 2021. Which his term might end next year in 2025. Or it might end in 2029. I don't know. It might be a lot sooner than that, but I don't know. So we'll find out uh, in November, depending on if Trump or Biden wins. Which we will also go over in the presidential election video. Sometime in December. So stay tuned for that. So, we're going to jump over to the House of Representatives and hear the entire, uh, every single article of impeachment against uh, Secretary Mayorkas. And I really have to apologize. It is very, very long. I just, I apologize. This whole next portion of the video <laughs> is damn near 20 minutes. Which, I really apologize. I try my best to try to chop it up as much as I possibly can without removing any sort of, like, unnecessary information. I, I really tried, guys. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. So, we'll just jump over to the House of Representatives and hear all of his charges. One quick thing before we jump into uh, our congressional footage. I actually kind of just realized right before I was done filming that last little bit. Um, all of today's congressional footage is all uh, courtesy to C-SPAN. So I want to thank C-SPAN for all this footage that we're all about to you know, just you know, watch. So thanks C-SPAN for footage. All right. Now over to the House floor for the, the charges. For what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee seek recognition? Madam Speaker, pursuant to House Resolution 996, I call up House Res 863 and ask for the immediate consideration in the House. The House will be in order. Please take your seats or take your conversations outside. The clerk will report the resolution. House calendar number 60, House Resolution 863. Resolved that Alejandro Nicolas Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security of the United States of America, is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors, and that the following articles of impeachment be exhibited to the United States Senate. Articles of impeachment exhibited, exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and of the people of the United States of America against Alejandro N. Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security of the United States of America, in maintenance and support of its impeachment against him for high crimes and misdemeanors. 
Article 1, willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. The Constitution provides that the House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment and that the civil officers of the United States, including the Secretary of Homeland Security, shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. In his conduct while Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro N. Mayorkas, in violation of his oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and to well and faithfully discharge the duties of his office, has willfully and systemically refused to comply with federal immigration laws in that. Throughout his tenure as Sec Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro N. Mayorkas has repeatedly violated laws enacted by Congress regarding immigration and border security. In large part because of his unlawful conduct, conduct, millions of aliens have illegally entered the United States on an annual basis with many unlawfully remaining in the United States. His refusal to obey the law is not only an offense against the separation of powers in the Constitution of the United States, it also threatens our national security and has had a dire impact on communities across the country. Despite clear evidence that his willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law has significantly contributed to unprecedented levels of illegal entrance, the increased control of the southwest border by drug cartels, and the imposition of enormous costs on states and localities affected by the influx of aliens, Alejandro in Mayorkas has continued in his refusal to comply with the law and thereby acted to the grave detriment of the interests of the United States. Alejandro N. Mayorkas engaged in this scheme or course of conduct through the following means. One, Alejandro N. Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the det detention mandate set forth in Section 235B2A of the Immigration and Nationality Act, requiring that all applicants for admission who are not clearly and beyond a doubt entitled to be admitted shall be detained for a removal proceeding. Instead of complying with his requirement, Alejandro and Mayorkas implemented a catch and release scheme whereby such aliens, aliens are unlawfully released, even without effective mechanisms to ensure appearances before the immigration courts for removal proceedings or to ensure removal in the case of alien order removed. Two, Alejandro and Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention mandate set forth in section 235B1BII of such act. Requiring that, requiring that an alien who is placed into expedited removal proceedings and determined to have a cr credible fear of prosecution shall be detained for further consideration of the application for asylum. Instead of complying with this requirement, Alejandro and Mayorkas implemented a catch and release scheme whereby such aliens are unlawfully released even without effective mechanisms to ensure appearances before the immigration courts for removal proceedings or to ensure removal in the case of aliens ordered removed. Three, Alejandro N. Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention set forth in section 235B1BIII4 of such act, requiring that an alien who is placed into expedited removal proceedings and determined not to have a credible fear of persecution shall be detained until removed. Instead of complying with this requirement, Alejandro N. Mayorkas has implemented a catch and release scheme whereby such aliens are unlawfully released, even without effective mechanisms to ensure appearances before the immigration courts for removal proceedings or to ensure removed in the case of aliens ordered removed. Four, Alejandro N. Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention mandate set forth in Section 236C of such act, requiring that a criminal alien who is inadmissible or deportable on certain criminal and terrorism-related grounds shall be taken into custody when the alien is released from law enforcement custody. Instead of complying with this requirement, Alejandro N. Mayorkas issued guidelines for the enforcement of civil immigration laws, which instructs Department of Homeland Security, here and at thereafter referred to as DHS, officials that the fact an individual is a removable non-citizen shall not alone be the basis of an enforcement action against them, and that DHS personnel should not rely on the fact of conviction alone. Even with respect to aliens subject to mandatory arrest and detention pursuant to Section 236C of such act, to take them into custody. In Texas versus United States 40F 4205 2022, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit concluded that these guidelines had every indication of being a general policy 
that is so extreme as to amount to an abdication of statutory responsibilities, and that its replacement of Congress's statutory mandates with concerns of equity and race is extra-legal and plainly outside the bounds of the power conferred by the INA. Five, Alejandro N. Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention mandate set forth in Section 241A2 of such act, requiring that an alien ordered removed shall be detained during the removal period. Instead of complying with this mandate, Alejandro N. Mayorkas issued guidelines for the enforcement of civil immigration laws, which instructs DHS officials that the fact an individual is a removable non-citizen shall not alone be the basis of an enforcement action against them, and that DHS personnel shall not rely on the fact of conviction alone, even with respect to aliens subject to mandatory detention and removal pursuant to Section 241A of such act. Six, Alejandro N. Mayorkas willfully exceeded his parole authority set forth in Section 212D5A of such act that permits parole to be granted only on a case-by-case -case basis, temporarily and for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit in that A. Alejandro and Mayorkas paroled aliens en masse in order to release them from mandatory detention, despite the fact that as the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit concluded in Texas versus Biden, 20 F 4th 928-2021, paroling every alien, DHS, cannot detain in the opposite of the case-by-case -case basis determines required by law and DHS's pretended power to parole aliens while ignoring the limitations Congress imposed on the parole power is not non-enforcement. It's misenforcement, suspension of the INA or both. B, Alejandro in Mayorkas created, reopened, or expanded a series of categorical parole programs never authorized by Congress for foreign nationals outside of the United States, including for certain Central American minors, Ukrainians, Venezuelans, Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, Colombians, Salvadorians, Guatemalans, Hondurans, which enabled hundreds of thousands of inadmissible aliens to enter the United States in violation of the laws enacted by Congress. Seven, Alejandro N. Mayorkas willfully exceeded his release authority set forth in Section 236A of such act that permits in certain circumstances the release of aliens arrested on an administrative warrant and that Alejandro N. Mayorkas released aliens arrested without a warrant despite their being subject to a separate applicable mandatory detention requirement set forth in Section 235B2 of such act. Alejandro N. Mayorkas released such aliens by retroactively issuing administrative warrants in an attempt to circumvent Section 235B2 of such act. In Florida versus United States, number 3, colon 21, CV 1066, TKW ZCB, ND, Florida, March 8, 2023, the United States District Court of the Northern District of Florida noted that this sleight of hand using an arrest warrant as a de facto release warrant is administrative sophistry at its worst. In addition, the court concluded that what makes DHS's application of 236A in this matter unlawful is that 235B2 not 236A, governs the detention of applicants for admission whom DHS places in removal proceedings after inspection. Alejandro N. Mayorkas, Alejandro N. Mayorkas's willful and systemic refu refusal to comply with the law has had calamitous consequences for the nation and the people of the United States, including one, during fiscal years 2017 through 2020, an average of about 590,000 aliens each fiscal year were encountered as inadmissible aliens at ports of entry on the southwest border or apprehended between ports of entry. Therefore, during Alejandro and Mayorkas's tenure in office, that number skyrocketed to over 1,400,000 in fiscal year 2021, over 2,300,000 in fiscal year 2022, and over 2,400,000 in fiscal year 2023. Similarly, during fiscal year 2017, through 2020, an average of 130,000 persons who were not turned back were apprehended after making an illegal entry were observed along the border each fiscal year. 
during Alejandro and Mayorkas's tenure in office, that number more than tr trebled to 400,000 in fiscal year 2021, 600,000 in fiscal year 2022, and 750,000 in fiscal year 2023. Two, American communi communities, both along the southwest border and across the United States, have been devastated by the dramatic growth in illegal entries, the number of aliens unlawfully present, and substantial rise in the number of aliens unlawfully granted parole, creating a fiscal and humanitarian crisis and dramatically degrading the quality of life of the residents of those communities. For instance, since 2022, more than 150,000 migrants have gone through New York City's shelter intake system. Indeed, the mayor of New York City has said that we are past our breaking point and that this issue will destroy New York City. In fiscal year 2023, New York City spent $1,450 million addressing Alejandro and Mayorkas' migrant crisis, and city officials fear it will spend another $12 billion over the following three fiscal years causing painful budget cuts in important city services. Three, Alejandro and Mayorkas' unlawful mass re release of apprehended aliens and unlawful mass grant of categorical parole to aliens have enticed an increasing number of aliens to make the dangerous journey to our southwest border. Consequently, according to the United Nations International Organization for Migration, the number of migrants intending to illegally cross our border who have perished along the way either en route to the United States or at the border, almost doubled during the tenure of Alejandro N. Mayorkas as Secretary of Homeland Security, from an average of about 700 a year during the fiscal years 2017 through 2020 to an average of about 1,300 a year during fiscal years 2021 through 2023. Four, alien smuggling organizations have gained tremendous wealth during Alejandro in Mayorkas's tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, with their estimated revenues rising from about $500 billion in 2018 to approximately $13 billion in 2022. Five, during Alejandro in Mayorkas's tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, the immigration court backlog, backlog has more than doubled from about 1,300,000 cases to over 3 million cases. The exploding backlog is destroying the court's ability to administer justice and provide appropriate relief in a time frame that does not run into years or even decades. As Alejandro and Mayorkas acknowledge, those who have a valid claim to asylum often wait years for a decision. Likewise, non-citizens who will ultimately be found ineligible for asylum or other protection, which occurs in the majority of cases, often have spent many years in the United States prior to being ordered removed. He noted that of aliens placed in expedited removal proceedings and found to have a credible fear of persecution, persecution and thus referred to immigration judges for removal proceedings, significantly fewer than 20% were ultimately granted asylum, and only 28% of cases decided on their merits are grants of relief. Alejandro and Mayorkas also admitted that the fact that migrants can wait in the United States for years before being issued a final order denying relief and that many such individuals are never actually removed likely incentivizes migrants to make the journey north. Six, during Alejandro and Mayorkas' tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, approximately 450,000 unaccompanied alien children have been encountered at the southwest border and the vast majority have been released into the United States. As a result, there has been a dramatic upsurge in migrant children being employed in dangerous and exploitive jobs in the United States. Seven, Alejandro and Mayorkas' failure to enforce the law, drawing millions of illegal aliens to the southwest border, has led to the reassignment of U.S. Border Patrol agents from protecting the border from illicit drug trafficking to processing illegal aliens for release. As a result, during Alejandro N. Mayorkas' tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, the flow of fentanyl across the border and other dangerous drugs, both at and between ports of entry, has increased dramatically. U.S. Customs and Border Protection seized approximately 4,800 pounds of fentanyl in fiscal year 2020, approximately 11,200 pounds in fiscal year 2021, approximately 14,700 pounds in fiscal year 2022, and approximately 27,000 pounds in fiscal year 2023. 
Over 70,000 Americans died from fentanyl poisoning in 2022, and fentanyl is now the number one killer of Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. Eight, Alejandro in Mallorcas has degraded public safety by leaving wide swaths of the border effectively unpatrolled as U.S. Border Patrol agents are diverted from guarding the border to process processing unlawful release, the heightening ways of apprehended aliens, many who now seek out agents for the purpose of surrendering with the now reasonable expectation of being released and granted work authorization. And federal air marshals are diverted, are diverted from protecting the flying public to assist in such processing. Nine, during Alejandro and Mayorkas' tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, the U.S. Border Patrol has encountered an increasing number of aliens on the terrorist watch list. In fiscal year 2017 through 2020 combined, 11 non-citizens on, non on the terrorist watch list were caught attempting to cross the southwest border between ports of entry. That number increased to 15 in fiscal year 2021, 98 in fiscal year 2022, 169 in fiscal year 2023, and 49 so far in fiscal year 2024. Additionally, in United States versus Texas 599 U.S. 670 2023, the United States Supreme Court heard a case involving Alejandro and Mayorkas' refusal to comply with certain federal immigration laws that are at issue in this Im impeachment. The Supreme Court held that states have no standing to seek judicial relief to compel Alejandro and Mayorkas to comply with certain legal requirements contained in the Immigration and Nationality Act. However, the Supreme Court held that even though the federal courts lack Article III jurisdiction over this suit, other forums remain open for examining the executive branch's enforcement policies. For example, Congress possesses an array of tools to analyze and influence those policies, and those are political checks for the political process. One such critical tool for Congress to influence the executive branch to comply with the immigration laws of the United States is impeachment. The dissenting justice noted, the court holds Texas lacks standing to challenge a federal policy that inflicts substantial harm on the state and its residents by re releasing illegal aliens with criminal convictions for serious crimes. In order to reach this conclusion, the court holds that the only limit on the power of a president to disobey a law like the important provisions at issue is Congress's power to employ the weapons of interbranch warfare. As the dissenting justice explained, Congress may wield what the Solicitor General described as political tools, which presumably means such things as impeachment and removal. Indeed, during oral argument, the justice who authored the majority opinion stated that the Solicitor, solicitor General, I think your position is, instead of judicial review, Congress has to resort to shutting down the government or impeachment or dramatic steps. Here, in light of the inability of injured parties to seek judicial relief to remedy the refusal of Alejandro and Mayorkas to comply with federal immigration laws, impeachment is, is Congress's only viable option. In all of this, Alejandro and Mayorkas willfully and systemically refused to comply with the immigration laws, failed to control the border to the detriment of national security, compromised public safety, and violated the rule of law and separation of powers in the Constitution to the manifest injury of the people of the United States. Wherefore, Alejandro and Mayorkas, by such conduct, has demonstrated that he will remain a threat to the national and border security, the safety of the United States people, and the Constitution if allowed to remain in office and has acted in a manner grossly incompatible with his duties and the rule of law. Alejandro and Mayorkas thus warrants impeachment and trial removal from office, and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. Article 2, breach of public trust. The Constitution provides that the House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment, and that civil officers of the United States, including the Secretary of Homeland Security, shall be removed from office or impeachment for, and conviction of, treason, bri bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. In his conduct while Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro N. Mayorkas, in violation of his oath to well and faithfully discharge the duties of his office, has breached the public trust, and that Alejandro N. Mayorkas has knowingly made false statements and knowingly obstructed lawful oversight of the Department of Homeland Security, here and thereafter referred to as DHS, principally to 
obfuscate the results of willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. Alejandro and Mayorkas engaged in this scheme or course of conduct through the following means. One, Alejandro and Mayorkas knowingly made false statements to Congress that the border is secure, that the border is no less secure than it was previously, that the border is closed, and that DHS has operational control of the border, as that term is defined in the Secure Fence Act of 2006. Two, Alejandro and Mayorkas knowingly made false statements to Congress regarding the scope and adequacy of the vetting of the thousands of Afghans who were airlifted into the United States and then granted parole following the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan after President Biden's precipitous withdrawal of United States forces. Three, Alejandro and Mayorkas knowingly made false statements that the apprehended aliens with no legal basis to remain in the United States were being quickly removed. Four, Alejandro and Mayorkas knowingly made false statements supporting the false narrative that U.S. Border Patrol agents maliciously whipped illegal aliens. Five, Alejandro and Mayorkas failed to comply with multiple subpoenas issued by congressional committees. Six, Alejandro and Mayorkas delayed or denied access of DHS Office of Inspector General, here and after referred to as OIG, to DHS records and information hampering OIG's ability to effectively perform its vital investigations, audits, inspections, and other reviews of agency programs and operations to satisfy the OIG's obligations under Section 402B of Title V, United States Code, in part to Congress. Additionally, in his conduct while Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro N. Mayorkas has breached the public trust by his willful refusal to fulfill his statutory duty to control and guard the boundaries and borders of the United States against the illegal entry of aliens, as set forth in Section 103A5 of the Immigration and Nationality Act. Alejandro N. Mayorkas inherited what his first chief of the U.S. Border Patrol called arguably the most effective border security in our nation's history. Alejandro and Mayorkas, however, proceeded to abandon effective border security initiatives without engaging in adequate alternative efforts that would enable DHS to maintain control of the border and guard against illegal entry. And despite clear evidence of the devastating consequences of his actions, he failed to take action to fulfill his statutory duty to control the border. According to his first chief of the U.S. Border Border Patrol, Alejandro and Mayorkas similarly rejected the multiple options to reduce the illegal entries through the proven programs and consequences provided by civil servants staff at DHS. Despite clear evidence of the devastating consequences of his actions, he failed to take action to fulfill his statutory duty to control the border, and that, among other things, one. Alejandro N. Mayorkas terminated the Migrant Protection Protocols, here and after referred to as MPP, in Texas versus Biden 20F4-928-2021, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit explained that the district court pointed to evidence that the termination of MPP has contributed to the current border surge, citing DHS's own previous determinations that MPP had curbed the rate of illegal entries. The district court has also pointed out that the number of enforcement encounters, that is, instances where immigration officials encounter immigrants at attempting to cross the southern border without documentation, have skyrocketed since MPP's termination. Two, Alejandro and Mayorkas terminated contracts for border wall construction. Three, Alejandro and Mayorkas terminated asylum cooperative agreements that would have equitably shared the burden of complying with international asylum accords. And all of this, Alejandro and Mayorkas breached the public trust by knowingly making false statements to Congress and the American people and avoiding lawful oversight in order to obscure the devastating consequences of his willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law and carry out his statutory duties. He has also breached the public trust by willfully refusing to carry out his statutory duty to control the border and guard against illegal entry, notwithstanding the calamitous consequences of his abdication of that duty. Wherefore, Alejandro N. Mayorkas, by such conduct, has demonstrated that he will remain a threat to the national and border security, the safety of the American people, and to the Constitution if allowed to remain in office, 
and has acted in a manner grossly incompatible with his duties and the rule of law, Alejandro and Mayorkas thus warrants impeachment and trial, removal from office, and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. Pursuant to House Resolution 996, the amendment in the nature of a substitute recommended by the Committee of Homeland Security is adopted. The resolution shall be debatable for two hours, equally divided, and controlled by the chair and ranking member of the Committee of Homeland Security or their respective designees. The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Green, and the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Thompson, each will control one hour. So, yeah, guys, I'm very sorry. I know we're at the 30-minute mark of the video. <laughs> that whole entire footage itself was like 26 minutes. You know why? Because the actual uh, resolution... 20 pages! This shit is 20 pages, guys! 20 pages for two articles of impeachment. They went in on this one, guys. But, uh, anyways... Uh, the main charges were... Uh, failure to enforce immigration laws and breach of public trust. All right, so of uh, the committee vote, well, it wasn't in the House Judiciary Committee. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird. I was a bit confused on it, but it came from the House Homeland Security Committee. Well, more like the House Committee on Homeland Security, I should say. And the vote for that was completely along party lines. 18 to 15. And so, we're going to go to the House floor once again and see uh, how they voted. On this vote, the yeas are 214 and the nays are 216. The resolution is not adopted. All right, so right there you saw the House voting 214 to 216 on whether or not if America should be impeached. And it failed. Yeah. Um, uh, at the podium there was Speaker Mike Johnson uh, delivering the final vote. So, how did each party uh, vote? Well, all but five Republicans voted in favor to impeach him, while all 212 Democrats voted to not impeach him. So, what happened to the five Republicans? Well, four of them decided to go alongside with the Democrats. And uh, those four are Ken Buck of Colorado, Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin, Tom McClintock of California, and Blake Moore of Utah. They vote alongside with the Democrats to try to stop this. Uh, one of them 
did not vote at all because uh, House Majority Leader Steve Scalise of Louisiana was absent doing, due to being treated for cancer. So, he was the only one that did not vote at all. So, House fails, and you would think, okay, that's it, game done, we're done. But nope, you're wrong, because a week later, they tried again. So we'll see what happens right now. On this vote, the yeas are 214 and the nays are 213. The resolution is adopted. And so with that, the second time the House tries and they succeed by one. <laughs> Last time they failed by two, now they succeed by one. So, alright, so 214 Republicans voted in favor of, yes, let's get rid of him. Three Republicans said no, and they went along with the 210 Democrats that also said no. There were a total of four members that did not vote at all. So, let's talk about the three Republicans that, once again, went alongside with the Democrats. And they're pretty much all the same. We have Ken Buck of Colorado, Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin, and Tom McClintock of uh, California. All voted no. Let's not do that. Uh, let's see here. And then the others were either have like flight delays or were like sick with like COVID or something. So, for almost a month, nothing really happens until about April 16th. The House managers, led by Marjorie Taylor Greene, sends the articles of impeachment over to the Senate, which, according to uh, the Senate rules of impeachment, the trial has to happen within one legislative day. So, the following day, the trial happens. And now, we're going to take it over to the Sergeant at Arms that will announce that the Senate is in a court of impeachment. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons are commanded to keep silent under pain of imprisonment while the Senate of the United States is convened as a court of impeachment to consider the articles of impeachment against Alejandro N. Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security. All right, so the Senate is now locked in. They're ready to start the trial. Unfortunately, as we are uh, about to learn here in just a few moments, since the Republicans control the House of Representatives, the Democrats still control the Senate. And so, Senator uh, Chuck Schumer, who is the majority leader of the Senate, has a nice little scheme he's been cooking up. So, let's see what he has to say. Madam President, I raise a point of order that impeachment Article 1 does not allege conduct that rises to the level of a high crime or misdemeanor as required under Article 2 Section 4 of the United States Constitution, and is therefore unconstitutional. Yeah, the Senate th thinks that, you know, it's unconstitutional to uh, claim that someone is uh, not following uh, procedures. And so there were tries to, you know, to try to table it. 
and there were also tries to, you know, to, to postpone it until uh, the 30th of April, which, you know, failed. And, God. And so, let's see what the Senate eventually says overall for Article 1 of Mayorkas's, uh charge. On this vote, the yeas are 51, the nays are 48. One senator responded present. The point of order is well taken, and the article falls. Madam President. Majority Leader is recognized. I raise a point of order that impeachment Article 2 does not allege conduct that rises to the level of a high crime or misdemeanor as required under Article 2, Section 4 of the United States Constitution and is therefore unconstitutional. Yeah, if they succeed at one, they're going to try for the other one too. So, uh, as you see right there, is that 51 senators say, yes, we're going to get rid of it, which is the simple majority, by the way. And 48 senators say, no, we're, we don't want to get rid of it. We're going to keep going with this. But one marked present, and that is uh, Senator Markowski of Alaska. She was the only one that said present. Meaning that she didn't want to have her say whatsoever, but she just said, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Okay, so, first impeachment uh, claim is dropped, and Senator Schumer there, as you, as you saw right there, said, hey, we want to get rid of the second one now. So we're going to see how the Senate says with this one. On this vote, Senate will be in order. On this vote, the yeas are 51, the nays are 49. The point of order is well taken. Article, Article 2 falls. Madam President. Majority Leader is recognized. I move to adjourn the impeachment trial of Alejandro N. Mayorkas, sine die, and I ask for the yeas and nays. Yeah, and they did the same thing again with this one. <laughs> now, uh, as you may have also seen, uh, Senator Schumer wants to adjourn the court of impeachment. And that way they can go on to their regular normal work. So we're going to go over the votes here real quick. Uh, the vote is uh, 51 to 49, completely on party lines. <clears throat> and so it completely drops, it falls, which means that Secretary Mayorkas is uh, scot-free and he is uh, therefore acquitted. I guess you could call it that, acquitted, on April 17th of 2024. And now, we'll see how the Senate says, hey, we're done with impeachment. We'll see. On this vote, the yeas are 51, the nays are 49. The motion is to agree to. The Senate sitting as the court of impeachment stands adjourned sine die. And there you have it. The impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas is over, is done. He is he gets to get off scot-free, even though he is guilty in my eyes. I mean, have you guys seen the border? <laughs> all right, so that's all we have for today. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I really do apologize that this one is real, real long. Half of this video is well, actually like more like uh, two thirds of this entire video is probably just congressional footage alone, and then the other half is just you know me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's all we have for today. Uh, I, I will also reiterate whenever we get a new impeachment case like when it happens we'll once again wait at least a month after it's over and then we'll jump into it and dive into it and you know unveil and dissect it as much as we possibly can and uh yeah <clears throat> thanks so much for watching like comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video whatever it may be
And stay tuned on Monday for our, annual, our monthly Q&A video. We'll see you then.